What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and happy Monday and welcome to a new week of crypto. Today we're going to be going through Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market. I'm going to be breaking down exactly what's happening today so you're not going to want to miss any of this video because basically I'm just going to give you a rundown of exactly what's going on. So before we get to that my name's Connor and of course I am not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy sitting in his room talking about different ways to make money online. So if that sort of thing interests you why don't you just quickly smash that like button Button, hit that subscribe button and without wasting any more of your time let's jump straight to this video welcome to the computer and welcome to another monday starting another weekly candle and look at that we've got two green weekly candles can we hold this please someone tell me we can so in today's video like i've said we're going to be going over exactly what's happening in the market and where i think we're going to go next so today is looking relatively good from what i was expecting over the weekend i was expecting quite a volatile weekend with a crash somewhere between the 30 and $25,000 mark. That obviously just goes to show that nobody on the internet knows what they're talking about because pretty much everyone was expecting that. I had about an allocation of 20% USDT waiting for some sort of dip. I still have it now because I do still think that we are going to go a little bit lower, but I want to be prepared for it, right? I think, however, we have a long, long road ahead of us when it comes to crypto and especially Bitcoin, Ethereum and coins like that. But I do think that in the short term, and we're going to see some volatility. We can see our good old friend from the Rich Dad Poor Dad franchise, Robert Kiyosaki, thinks that Bitcoin is heading towards the worst month since 2011. His opinion? That's great news. My opinion, it's also great news. I think that at this point where we are, we're currently at a 44% dip since the all-time high. And I just feel like right now is a time that's going to be boring, right? I don't think we're going to see the massive volatility that we saw around these points. And I don't think we're going to see this massive volatility here anytime soon. Now, I do think that we will, however, go into maybe the mid-20s at some point. But I think this journey that we're going to be in now is going to be relatively relatively boring for some time. Maybe we'll see this sort of movement, you know, something like this around these areas, which, you know, is a good thing. This is a good thing because what it gives us is the opportunity for accumulation. And it also gives the whales an opportunity for accumulation. These big institutions that everybody wanted to come into Bitcoin, it gives them a time to accumulate. They were never going to accumulate at these massive all-time highs. Now we can go back to 2013, these bull runs here, and you can see that we had two happen in the same year. And what's happening now could very well be what played out here. We saw an overall, look at that, we saw overall an 82% dip followed by a 264% correction followed by then again another dip down about 64% before returning to a new all-time high all the way up here at 1700%. So what we could see playing out right now is potentially this. You know, we went up, we had this big run up and then we crashed down again because of the China FUD and whatever the reason behind the most recent crash was. We've covered it a lot in this channel. Just look back on the most recent videos. You'll see all of the reasons. Elon Musk, China, whales, institutions, all of that stuff causing this crash. But what I'm saying is I think that us traveling sideways for a little bit of time, maybe this lasts a few months isn't a bad thing. The market's boring and loads of people become millionaires in a boring market. It gives you time to accumulate, right? It gives you time to put money aside to buy into these assets that you think have a long-term possibility. Now, obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, so nothing I'm saying is financial advice, but I myself will be buying these dips. And if we see some really big crashes, you know, there's some people that are thinking that we're actually going to go below the last all-time high. Now, all I'm saying is we should be prepared for all of these outcomes. Outcome number one is a V-shaped recovery where we head fast back to the all-time highs, which I think is very unlikely because I don't think whales and institutions will allow this to happen simply because they want to accumulate. Now, the second option is for us to go violently downwards, you know, down to around maybe the $10,000 range. Now, I don't think this is going to happen because I don't think that there are enough people that are going to be completely selling out of their positions in order for this to happen. If we head over to Glassnode's Twitter, we can see here the market currently has three supply trends in play. Short-term holders are distributing, so they're selling. Long-term holders are holding and accumulating, and miners 
are accumulating, right? The Bitcoin market is a battleground between bulls and bears. You can see right here that the total supply held by short-term holders was the highest on April 19th, and that was around our all-time high. And then we have been on a massive decline. So this is a decline in the total supply held by very short-term holders. Now, if you look here, miners have been accumulating, so they're not selling as much of their Bitcoin, and long-term holders have been holding and accumulating. So people like me who have been around for let's say four years, maybe longer than me, maybe just a few years are holding because what's happened in the market recently is nothing new, right? We've seen it so many times before. We even saw it here in 2019 when people don't even really count this as a bull run, where Bitcoin went up 333%. You know, that's actually a bigger run from when we left the previous all-time high to where we hit our current all-time high back in April. That was a bigger run here in 2019. So we ran up 325%, give or take, and then we had a nice little downturn to about 73%. And then what happened just after that? We had this 1500% rally from that all-time low. So by the looks of things, we actually have these huge run-ups quite often. So what's happening right now is nothing new if you've been around. Now, at this point in your investment journey, what I would say is it's time to come up with an investment plan, right? Are, next, if we do see this V-shaped recovery, which is one of the options, are you going to be taking profits? If not, then you are perfectly fine find where you are right now because you were never going to take profits, right? There's no reason to cry over spilt milk because you were never actually going to take profits when we we're at 64k. That's how I feel. I was never going to sell my whole bag. That was never going to happen. So to think that, hey, I lost, you know, a couple of hundred grand isn't actually the whole truth because I never would have sold at 64. I never would have sold then. So you have to come up with a plan. And during these boring times, this is the perfect time to plan. You know, if you're, for example, accumulating during these boring times, you know, you're buying here, you're buying here, you're buying here, maybe once a week, once a month, whatever your plan is, is your plan to, let's say, if you averaged your cost here, that would be an 84% gain. So are you going to sell maybe 50% of your position at that 85? percent gain? Are you going to sell on the way up or are you just going to hold? This is now the perfect time for you to come up with your plan for Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market. And the reason why right now is such a good time for you to set out your plan is because your mind is not clouded by any emotion, right? If you were planning your exit strategy, for example, when we were crashing just a few days ago, your plan would be incredibly different to if you were planning your exit strategy on the way up, let's say a month ago. So right now, there's not so much emotion. Let's say you've been dollar cost averaging over the past few days or few weeks. You're maybe a little bit in profit, a little bit in loss, or maybe you're just about break even. It's the perfect time for you to start planning to where, for example, you intend to take profit or if you are just holding for, let's say, the next four years. Now, if you want to keep up to date whenever I make any form of trade, you can check out my Patreon. The link is down there in the description. You'll get direct access to my private Discord where we have AMAs, early access to my video, and of course, alerts when I make any form of trade. And there is so much more in there. So go check it out down in my description. I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed. So if we head over to CoinMarketCap and we can see that today is actually quite a good day. Like I said, I'm quite surprised that we are here at 36,000 because we're currently in this three day weekend and the volume is historically low over the weekend and on holidays. So we can see Bitcoin making quite nice moves. Now, I haven't bought back in with my 20% tether yet. I'm still waiting to see where we go from here. But currently we are sitting on the 24 hour at 0.35 percent on Bitcoin, which is nice to see. We have our gainers, GRT, 13% up, DCR, 13% up. One of our big players, XRP, up 13%. That's very nice to see. That's very nice for my portfolio. XFIN Network, up 11% and Compound, up 9.27%. And on the bad side, we got Nexo down 4%. This really isn't that bad, is it? We got Zen down 3.49, Bakery Token 3%, Polygon just under 4%, and Theta 2%. A lot of people love Matic, Polygon Matic right now. It is a very interesting coin. If you'd like me to do a little deep dive into that, I am considering investing into it. So it might be quite nice to make a video based around that. So let me know if you want me to do that. And yeah, so we can see the overall market is up one66 
6% at $1.58 trillion. So that is around a trillion dollars less from our all time high. So what I'm hoping is over the next few weeks, the next few months, this money starts to come back into the market, right? It comes into Bitcoin, Ethereum, the big players first, slowly trickles down into the other altcoins. And then again, we may see that hype coin realm play out again, you know, the massive boom in hype coins. You know, I think it's quite likely that we see some scenario like maybe back in 2013 or even here, you know, even just two years ago here. And just for a little perspective, remember that Bitcoin is still sitting today an 822% gain from where it was just one year ago in that flash crash. Remember what happened? I don't know if a lot of you guys were around, but if you were, you may have thought that buying Bitcoin at 10,000 like I did was a great shout. And then just about a week later, it crashed 50%. And what did I do? I had full conviction in Bitcoin, so I bought more. Now we've seen an almost exactly scenario play out. And don't get me wrong, that was a scary time, right? We actually thought the world was ending. This was back when the Roni Rona first came out, right? And we genuinely thought the world was ending, right? That's why everyone got scared. Every single market across the board crashed. And we crashed in Bitcoin significantly from the high down about what, what, 63%. And that happened you know, in a few days, I was there. I remember sitting there and it was incredibly crazy and scary. But right now, we don't think the world's going to end, right? We're just a bit scared about what Elon Musk might say next. And then another way to put this into perspective was if you had have bought at the last all-time high. So you say you're in the position where you bought Bitcoin at an all-time high here. It's a very scary place to be in right now. Don't get me wrong. I understand exactly how you feel because I did exactly that back in 2017. I bought Bitcoin. I bought some of my long-term altcoins and then they crashed massively, right? I held them through this whole time and it was very scary. But if you had have bought at the all time high just four years ago, even right now after a 50% crash, you would still be in profit, right? And then if you had this long-term conviction and you were dollar cost averaging through all of this time here, you'd be in a massive amount of profit still right now. So keep that in mind. If you're panicking, if you're scared, remember if you are seriously panicking right now at this point, then you do probably have too much money in the market, right? So it could be a good time to maybe deleverage or take some money out of the market so you can chill, right? You need to take a step back and just chill out because right now we don't know where we're going next. In order for me to feel a little bit more relaxed, to be a little bit more secure in my position, like I said, I've taken some of that USDT out and I'm ready to buy the dip. So I can be prepared if we go up, maybe I'll lose about 15% when I buy back, when I see some more confirmation that we're back in bull market, right? By confirmation, what I would be looking for is us to close above this 21 weekly moving average. You can see we're very far away. And then another bit of confirmation is what I want to see is on the daily, the 200 daily moving average. I want to break through that. We can come back, test it, turn it into support and then end up going up. That's what I want to see for a bit more confirmation that we're back in a bull market. So until then, I probably won't be buying more unless I see some really good deals out there on the market, you know, like a flash crash happens again, then I'll definitely be buying more. But that's what I'm looking for. And I did post something on Twitter recently. If you don't follow me over there, do come over and follow me there because I do just post exactly how I'm feeling minute by minute, day by day, whenever it is. So do come over and follow me there. The link is down there in the description. What I'm seeing here is technically we are bearish, right? But fundamentally, the market, the sentiment around it is bullish. Institutions buying, Apple potentially buying, PayPal putting it on their books, massive investors like Kathy Wood buying it, you know, and saying that they do personally believe in it. We're very bullish. The technology is getting better and better. We've got Ethereum, we've got Ethereum 2.0 coming out. We've got Cardano releasing, releasing their main net soon. Everything is getting better. So fundamentally, we are bullish. Personally, I am buying that freaking dip, right? And then most importantly, I don't expect the recovery to happen overnight. Be long term, have a long term mind, be chill, zoom out, chill out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.